Good afternoon, members and friends of St. Paul United Methodist Church. I'm Jim Whitby. I've been with you on many occasions, both to preach as well as to be a member of the congregation. It's always good to be with you, and I'm glad to have this opportunity to be with you today, though I wish I could see your beautiful faces. But instead, you have to look at my eye. Not beautiful face, just my face. But at any rate, um, Tim asked me to fill in today, and I'm glad to be able to do that. I'm not going to preach a sermon in the strictest sense of the word. There won't be a text on which my words are based, so it really can't be a sermon. There will be scripture, so don't worry about that. But without a text, it's not really a sermon. What I want to do is uh, just share some words with you about yourself and a few words to begin with about myself. You're going to have plenty of opportunities for good sermons in the days and years ahead as you have in the past. First of all, though, if this were a sermon, and it's not, I would entitle it, not a sermon, or I might entitle it, what's in a name? Do you like your name? The name by which you go day after day. Now, my full given name is James Earl Webby. And even though Earl means noble, I really am not fond of that name. For one thing, I don't think it particularly fits me. There's nothing noble about me. So I've decided I want to change my middle name. So I'm going to ask you, if your first, middle, or last name is Wesley, please raise your hand. Uh, yeah, I see someone way back there. I'm going to ask a favor of you. I want to talk to you because I want to swap names with you. I'll give you Earl if you'll give me Wesley, and I will probably go by the name Wes. Now, one of the reasons I don't like the name Earl, particularly as it's paired with James, what does that bring to your mind? James Earl for those of you who are old enough to remember, I guess you're saying, oh yeah, James Earl Ray, that infamous character who marked April 4th, 1968. was a dark day in the history of our nation when he killed Martin Luther King Jr. No one ever associates the name James Earl with James Earl Jones, the well-known actor who, uh, whose skills as an actor are well known for many reasons. One of the great things he did, and you may not be aware of this, is that he made a recording of the 26 books of the New Testament. Now, can you imagine how that sounds with his deep baritone voice? Unfortunately, the negative of the name James Earl usually outweighs any positive. So, from now on, if you don't mind, just call me Wes. Reminiscent, of course, of one of the great founders of our denomination. And let's say it together, John Wesley. Under his direction, Methodists became leaders in many social issues of the day in, in England, including prison reform and the abolition, abolition of slavery. Theologically, he taught that it was by faith that a believer was transformed into the likeness of Christ. And by the end of his life, he was being described as the best loved man in England. Now, who among us wouldn't want to be named after this giant in the faith? However, there is another giant in the faith who preceded John Wesley by many years, whose name is one also to be coveted. So let me ask you another, another question. Do you know what holiday tomorrow, June 29th, is? 
It's the Catholic feast day of guess who? Anyone have a guess? That's right. St. Paul. Big days, uh, feast days are big days, big deals in the Catholic Church. So folks, your name is St. Paul. So get ready to eat, drink, and be merry, six feet apart, of course, and wearing masks. I wonder what happened, though, or what transpired 74 years ago in 1946 when this congregation was founded. Now, I'm older than you as a congregation, but you look a heck of a lot better than I do. Were any of you a part of that founding? Were any of you charter members of the church? If so, you might not have had a lot to do with the naming of the church because 74 years ago, you could have been in your 80s, you could have been in your 70s, your 80s, or you may now be in your 70s, 80s, or 90s, and maybe didn't have a part in the naming of the church. But five of the six congregations that I have served as a pastor were named after the community in which their building was located. Not so with St. Paul. Maybe because another Methodist church came along a few years earlier and took the name of your community. But you could have been named Garden Drive United Methodist Church or perhaps some other geographical name linked to you. But you went after St. Paul. You decided you wanted to be St. Paul Methodist Church. Now, why St. Paul? There were many other great followers of Christ. There were 12 apostles. Now, I know of at least one of those whom, whose name you wouldn't want to assume, but you went for another early follower of the way who is purported to have written 12 books in the New Testament. There wasn't enough of his personal history that, or there was enough of his personal history that might have turned you away from naming the church after him, but he had a different name then. His name, of course, was Saul. Until Christ got a hold of him. Now, I've always thought it was precisely because of Saul's, Paul's energy and passion that God called on him to be a missionary to the Gentiles. God needed someone with passion, someone with conviction and courage and fortitude for the task that was given to him. So here comes Paul, not yet saint, to proclaim the atonement and that Christians are freed from sin through Jesus' death and resurrection. He successfully argued that non-Jews could be converted to the way without first having to become a Jew. He traveled wisely, as we all know, delivering perhaps his best known speech in Athens, Greece, that is. It's known as the Areopagus Sermon in Acts 17, verses 16 through 24, in which he made clear his dismay at the number of pagan gods that the people were worshiping. I encourage you to read that. Again, it's Acts 17, 16 through 34. He said, As I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. So you're ignorant of the very thing you worship, and this is what I'm going to proclaim to you. We sure need him around today, don't we, friends? So what's in the name? What is it about Paul that, that attracted you, that called you to name your congregation after him? He's been described as having these characteristics, giving, patient, possessing a servant heart, outrageous, a prayer, humble, uncompromising, passionate, ethical, forgiving, and honest. Wow. You picked a good name, and I want to congratulate you on that. Just as Wesley would be a difficult name for us to live up to, so Paul also presents its own set of challenges for you. But you know what? You're meeting them well. 
I reached out to your two most recent pastors, that is to Tim Best and Sarah Barnell, who love you dearly, to see how they felt like you live up to this name by carrying out ministry with St. Paul's characteristics. Neither of them had anything to say. They couldn't come up with it. Of course, they did. <laughs> they had a lot to say. And uh, I think they hit the nail on the head. Giving, one of Paul's characteristics. Your recent involvement with foster families by giving backpacks to many children at Holston Home and providing a, a local family, I think, with school clothes and shoes. Well, that was back when children actually went to school, and we hope we get back to that someday. You contributed $700 in one Sunday to provide new shoes and coats for children. You've always been quick to reply to the needs of the members and people in the community. I see it in your hallway when I come into church of, of things you're collecting for people in the community, for Fountain City Ministry Center and other agencies. You expend a huge amount of money and energy on your fall festival, which I hope you're able to hold this year, so that you'll have funds to help community families in times of need and provide a good time for those who are fortunate enough to be able to attend the festival. You're patient. You're patient and caring, not just for people, not just for one another, not just for people in the community, but also for your own building. Look at the beautiful flowers that, are on, that, that you have at the front of your building. I always admire your grounds when I drive by and think, wow, someone has put a lot of time and energy into that. It takes patience to do that. So I know if for no other reason you have patience. And your biggest test of patience was having two Ferguson brothers as your pastors. Okay, I'm going to pause for the laughter. I hear you. You're laughing. I was just kidding, Don and Andy, so don't take it seriously. You prove your servant heart time and time again in practically everything you do. In addition to the things I've already mentioned, when your children's ministry started growing, an extra room was needed for building for, for housing children's church. Now, you didn't say, oh, we got to build a new building. That's going to cost several hundred thousand dollars or a million or more. But one of the adult classes very generously out of its servant heart gave up their classroom to serve the needs of the children in your congregation and community. Humility coupled with your servant heart could well be your middle name, St. Paul Humility United Methodist Church. Wow, in addition to the things I've already mentioned, well, no one could claim to be any better than anyone else. And no one in your congregation claims to be any better than anyone else. No one says, I do more for the church and for the Lord than you do. You might have even been, been seen outside picking trash up along the road, day in and day out. You go about serving the Lord without worrying about who gets credit for it. Your whole church was excited, not envious, but excited when one of your members had a street, albeit a brief one, named after her here in Fountain City. And talk about a prayer. You are prayers. You know how to pray. Every time I'm with you, I'm impressed and, and appreciative of the ways that you're eager to offer prayer for others and to request prayers for others. And almost unheard of, in your humble spirit in praying is praying for your pastor when your pastor prays for you even if you're a patient in the hospital pastor can pray for you and you'll say may i offer a prayer for you and one pastor said i've never before experienced such a deep commitment to prayer now one part of paul's teaching from which i depart in terms of agreement is is sometimes view on the role of women in society and as spiritual leaders. And unfortunately, only a few of his verses have influenced the Christian church's friendliness toward a male hierarchy in the role of spiritual leadership. But let us remember that the book of Romans 
authored by the Apostle Paul, it is believed, was delivered by a woman by the name of Phoebe, who was the first known deacon in the Christian church. And in Galatians 3, 28, Paul says, there is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female, for all of you, all of us, are one in Christ Jesus. I remember fondly my own time with you as a district superintendent, well, the end of last century and the first part of this century, and was always excited by being with you for whatever occasion it might have been. And after attending a couple of other staff parish relations committee meetings with a couple of other churches in what was then known as the Knoxville District, I heard people express their opposition to women's pastor. But can you imagine how refreshing and exciting it was to come to one of your staff parish relations committee meetings when a change in pastors was to be expected and you said not only would you welcome a woman as a pastor, but you would like to have a woman as a pastor. So St. Paul United Methodist Church, keep on doing what you're doing, becoming even more a living embodiment of the Apostle Paul, and then even more a living embodiment of Jesus Christ. Remember Paul's words, faith, hope, and love, these three, the greatest of these is love. And remember also his words, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I'll guarantee you, your new pastor will not let you rest on your laurels as you would tend to look. It's okay to look to the past and be appreciative of what you've done, what you've done but don't rest on your laurels. She is not going to let you rest on your laurels. In fact, she might not let you rest much at all, just as your previous pastors have also worked with you. And finally, I would leave you with these words. Wash your hands. Sanitize them well. Wear your masks and stay six feet apart. I don't know what plans you may be putting together for coming back together for worship. Take your time on that. Make sure you get it right, of course. But I'm sure, absolutely positive, that great days are ahead for you, St. Paul United Methodist Church, in advancing the work and the word of Jesus Christ in your community and in the world. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Glorious and loving God, thank you. Thank you for guiding us in these past years as we know you'll continue to guide us in the years ahead. Be with us in this time of transition. Be with our new pastor. In this time of transition, be with him as he goes into a new ministry. God, and bless us all that we may be a blessing to the gospel of Jesus Christ as we bless the world with the good news. In the name of Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. May God bless you. One of the things I like about delivering a few words with video instead of in person is that you can go back and correct a few things. I have I listened to what I had to say, and there are three things I want to correct. First of all, I think I said 26 books of the New Testament. It's 27 books of the New Testament, and you probably caught me on that. I talked about some verses in chapter 17 of Acts, and it's verses 16 through 34, not 24. And I misquoted a verse in Galatians when I said, Paul said, neither Jew, Jew nor Gentile, and it should be Jew nor Greek. So thank you for letting me make these corrections. See you later. Bye-bye.